No questions so <laughs> far. So I think uh, all of you are in the module business uh, area and uh, to me when I first got in touch with modules was just the 35 millimeter half bridge. Now we have so many different kind of modules that uh, it is uh, quite exciting to see how the modules of today can solve complex systems requirements. Any of you have specific comments of the special modules? I see Alexei. Alexei, yep. you have such great modules in your background. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Uh, uh, well, previously, uh, mostly I worked with the power modules, thyristor died modules, and just this year I switched uh, to this new company uh, where we focus on uh, silicon carbide uh, mainly, uh, also IGBT modules, but uh, main focus still is silicon carbide. So we do it in various packages and well, uh, we're trying to go with the trend step by step. Uh, and as we all know, uh, nowadays, uh, our whole society, our whole world is moving forward to these uh, zero net uh, carbon emissions uh, by various steps, by various ways. So uh, uh, some choose renewable energy, some go with electric vehicles. But still, all these right now uh, also go with the Y-band gap uh, solutions like gallium nitride or silicon carbide. And in Lipris, uh, we focus on silicon carbide for various applications. And like uh, in my presentation uh, today, uh, we also have quite great solutions for the solar industry, for solar inverters. Uh, in particular, um, we see this, uh, actually this kind of uh, technology uh, being you know, uh, increasing a lot in the, in the coming years uh, to be less dependent on uh, fuel energy, on uh, fossil uh, energy. Uh, that's why we stick to these uh, exact uh, solutions. Uh, to go with the um, society to a greener uh, future. Thank you, Alexei. In the meantime, we got a very important physical question. I saw it in the meantime. Uh, how do you evaluate the center technology and do you plan to introduce it in the near future? That's a question to Vincotech, to Evangelos. Yes, I hope you can hear me very well. We uh, hear you perfectly. Okay, so it's a very good question. Um, I think Cinder is, um, let's say, well known technology and already used in uh, uh, many applications uh, with where uh, high requirements in terms of reliability, for instance, in automotive. So, but the disadvantage of this technology uh, are the costs, especially the material costs and also the investment that you have to do in new machines and in new processes. So before to decide to, to use Cinder, I think you have to answer several questions. Um, for instance, can I cover the application requirements in terms of reliability, or especially power cycle capability to keep the link to the presentation that I gave before? Uh, with standard technology, or if this is not the case, can I prove the standard and the connection technology to fulfill the specification without to increase the costs? And also, if not, well, then 
will be the cost uh, the customer will be willing to accept the higher cost using cinder technology and last but not least if we change to cinder what will be the solution for the wire bonds and uh, the, so the decision for cinder should be based on the fact that uh, if there is a value edge uh, if there is a value for the application, especially for the customer, which should uh, satisfy uh, these higher costs, to implement Cinder without to improve also the wire bonds at the same time would not make sense from my point of view, because this will be the next weak point. You will gain some additional reliability. For instance, um, I would estimate factor 2.4 more power cycle. Uh, capability compared with this new solder alloy that uh, we have uh, presented. Uh, but the limiting factor in this case will be the via bonds, uh, fire bonds failures. So the question again is, is this uh, 2.5 uh, higher power cycle capability worth compared with a much higher module cost? Uh, or is the solution that we have uh, uh, provided, presented with this improved solar alloy yet sufficient uh, enough to satisfy the, um, the, the requirement? So I would say in our cost-driven market, we still believe, we know they still believe that with our efficient and cost-effective solution, we can fulfill the reliability requirement. But for sure in future, there will be application which will need Cinder. But as I said before, there are several questions to be answered before to go in this direction. Thank you, Evangelos. That is for me, I guess. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> technical question. I had uh, fun in the past when uh, a director at uh, a different business said the most important physical dimensions is the price of the device. Yeah, it's probably yeah, for some people true, for some others not. It depends on who you talk to, I guess. Well, the question here is 90 euro. Uh, in my presentation, I put 90 euro as an example an adder for an end user that buys a 15 kilowatt drive and that's a difference from silicon IGBTs to silicon carbide. It's a good guess. It can be 100, can be 110, can also be 80. It, it's somewhere at that range I would expect it. But what I also showed that this is actually not really important. Of course, silicon carbide is more expensive and it probably remained that way forever or for a long, long time. But on the other side, the, the benefits that brings us the freedom and design, which I also try to point out in the presentation, that can really overcompensate the cost. So it, whether you go for high efficiency and save energy, that can pay back in a year or less, or depending on your energy cost even fast, faster, or if you go for the lower um, the volume, if you release the heat sink size, I think I brought it down to 66%, no, 66% smaller heat sink than with a silicon solution. And if you think that thing further means the drive can shrink, that means handling is easier. So for a, let's say 70, 75 or 90 kilowatt drive, you won't need a forklift or two people to lift it. You can just put it at the wall done. That gives you essential benefits or you put, if they are smaller, the drives, you can put more on one pallet, put more in the same container. So shipping gets uh, cheaper, so it, it triggers a long chain of, of really benefits, and that's that's the real use that silicon carbide can bring us in the drives world. Um, and that, as I said, that overcompensates the the little investment cost that we have on the module side or on the chip side. That's how we see it, and I hope that the end user will also see that. And and I think it will drive a change in the drives world sooner or later. Thank you. Carson, sorry, I've got a quick question for Carson because it was an excellent topic. I think in Germany today you're paying, I was at Electronica a couple of weeks ago and I asked a lot of German colleagues and they're paying something like 65 euro cents per kilowatt hour on the electric. So well, that's, that's something. Dep that depends on your contract. I'm lucky, mine is two years old, not, not renewed yet. Probably next year I, I look uh, not as, as lucky as now. Anyway, the, it depends also it's if it's industrial uh, electricity or, or residential. So residential, it depends on the supplier. I think the, the mean is somewhat at 30 probably at the minute, 30 cents. Mm -hmm. Industrial yeah. is a little lower, but that also goes up. So, 
So if you're question. looking at a, a 50, but the point, the point being, if you're looking at, at, at kilowatts of drive, you mentioned the payback. And right now, if you do some simple mathematics, the payback's about three months. Well, it depends on how much you pay. And I think it also depends on, on your application and your application profile. So if you have an application, I, if you look at my presentation, I had an uh, a running profile for a fan application. And that yeah. is just an assumption of a typical yeah. fan. But if it if your fan is running full time at 50% or 60, then it's probably even faster. So Correct. It, Correct. it really depends on the case. So if someone is considering and he's thinking that silicon carbide is, is just too expensive for him, then I, my only recommendation is come and let's look at the application and we'll find it out. That's that's the thing. And I'm sure that in most of the applications, we'll find it, it's, it brings a benefit, it pays back easy, and it has so many benefits that you probably don't even see yet in the long, if, if you Correct. think it further. Yeah. And that's a big thing here. Correct. Okay. Nothing is for free. The question is addressed to Evangelos. You improved PC performance by soldering improvement. No change in viral bonding, correct? That's the question. This is correct, yeah. The, this was the understanding. As I said before, when the question came up with the sendering, so their focus was to improve this interconnection technology between chip and, uh, and uh, substrate. For sure, once you improved, once you have pro improved this uh, joint, then you have to look also on the, because you're, as I said before, you're moving this big point from the Zolda joint to the wire point. So, if you would like to increase further the reliability, then for sure you have to do also something for wire bonds. But for the moment, we are, uh, for instance, uh, a cindering. We discussed uh, about cindering also copper wire bonds. Uh, but this is at the moment, that we are looking on some new uh, technologies, but uh, at the moment uh, not implemented yet. But for sure, this will be the next step after we have. Uh, uh, improved uh, the solder joint. So, but we see also in the market already some other uh, uh, power module manufacturers they are doing, they are, impl they are implementing also for the wire bonds some new technologies, uh, which for sure uh, the same also with the cinder, uh, uh, yeah, it's increasing the, the, the power module cost, but it's a question. So what, which requirement you will, you have to fulfill? What is the application? If the application <clears throat> really needs this, and then, yeah, you, you have to think also about this. Thank you, Evangelos. So it's question to all. We see a trend for recommended gate drive voltage of SIC power modules to be moving to lower values for latest generation devices. Will this trend continue? This demands lower power from the gate drive system. But what are the specific advantages for the SIC device? You want me to take that one as a device guy, device manufacturer? Go ahead. Um, I mean, there's still some inconsistencies in different gate drive voltages, positive and negative, from different suppliers. Unlike silicon, where everyone gravitated years ago to exactly the same drives, you're still seeing a few faults difference in operational and apps max. But you're right, they're all coming into a similar grouping, 15 to 18 volts turn on and your minus four volts turn off. A um, lot of discussion in the industry about zero volt turn off. And I think everybody's silicon carbide can turn off at zero, soft switch without shoot through. But the inherent nature of silicon carbide is a low threshold. Um, so when hot, everybody's devices are hovering around about two volts hot. 
And so that's pretty close to zero. So that's why we all recommend hard switching, taking negative. So there, there, there are some zones of positive and negative gate drive that you're going to see. But unfortunately, the industry has not yet evolved to standardize on exactly the same voltage. So we have to keep everyone on their toes. Um, as long as you fully enhance the switch, but turn on, which typically once you're through Miller and you're through the other end is 12, 13 volts, then you can overdrive slightly to lower RDS alt to a certain point, but then you may stand a compromise of long-term reliability if that was the second part of the question. But I think the first part was the more important that yes, there still is some difference, still are some differences on VGS, positive and negative, and you will continue to see some small differences. Thank you, Gary. Any additional comments in, from the other speakers? We have the next question coming. I still would like to see smaller packages than the tall packages to use good SIC pads instead of falling back to SI only for smaller footprints, especially if you do HB integration. I use SIC now for higher temperature reliability applications and faster switching. What's on the horizon? Most is just larger power usage, which is already out of my application range. It's a, to me, very general question that needs a little maybe more specific things because I remember sometimes it's good to have enough uh, space and uh, get the heat out. If you get the devices smaller and smaller, you have more and more problems extracting the heat. So it's just a physical thing from my perspective, uh, what you do with packaging. If you make it smaller, you get a smaller footprint. And if you run hotter, which is possible with your devices, then there are two things that drive other uh, problem zones that need to be solved. That's just from an old man's perspective. <laughs> if you think, have more, more well, comments. Bodo, you've got to think of creepage and clearance as well. This, this gentleman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Creepage and yeah. clearance. That's, you know, that's the other thing. If you have high voltage, and it's so small that you have, have no creepage distance uh, for the high voltage application. Yeah, the so, die sizes are small. You know, all silicon carbide starts at 600 volts, 650. The die sizes yeah. are very small, so you could fit the die into a QFN three by three millimeter package quite easily. But to your point, thermals, and secondly, 3.3 three, uh, three by three QFN violates creepage and clearance at 650 volts. So it's a bit of a, it's, it's another physical challenge, thermals and creepage and clearance, if you're looking at small discrete packages. Yeah. So this question can only be answered by putting up the technical requirements in the application and find out what can be the next 
possible best solution. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot put general things out uh, the way uh, that question was uh, said. But in general, we have over the years, when I was still a younger man, the half bridges, the 35 millimeter half bridge was a standard and uh, that had been changed quite a bit. I now the, the next yeah, the question. Yeah, the gentleman's just added a bit more. So this is low power, lower voltage. To be uh, quite okay. honest, low power, lower voltage, 200 volts, 100 odd watts, is possibly more of a GAN type of environment than it is silicon carbide, uh, okay. to be honest, maybe. Yeah. Okay, the next question. We are waiting for the next question. My backstage is... Waiting, Guy, my deepest sympathy to John's family and uh, to Wolf Speed. Thank you, Bodo. Uh, will do. Absolutely will do. It was always fun to meet John, and uh, we had so many great discussions. And I was shocked when Holger told me yeah. that he passed away. It's life and we have uh, to accept life as it is. So back to our SIC subjects. I I think most of the German people are now out for lunch. <laughs> dinner, for dinner. <laughs> for, dinner. Uh, for dinner, sorry. I... <laughs> Only students are out for lunch now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, Kirsten, you are representing the semicon side. No, both, as you can see, both. semicron denfer. Yeah, so we uh, are now but, semicron but, denfer. But but you are sitting in in Nuremberg. I belong to the to the Nuremberg part. Yeah, I, I belong oh. to semicron, but now we are semicron denfer. So okay, yeah, it's a it's a long time ago when I worked for Harris. And uh, we had a number of great meetings in Nuremberg, getting the Harris, especially GE Solid State and RCA IGBTs in front uh, to Semicron, who wanted to put them in the half bridges and the big problem was at that time nobody at Harris really has the understanding of uh, the wire bonding and bonding the gate was a sick wire at that time there were no multiple hats who could send and sick wire uh, on one station it was a very exciting time and I had nice memories to the meeting room in 
Nuremberg at Semicron. Oh, it's probably a while ago. So if you come now, you it's a while <laughs> ago. <laughs> if you come now, it, everything looks different, and there's more. Yeah, it does, it. does not end it up in business. Uh, it helped me to get a better picture of what's possible in the uh, power industry. I saw all the nice uh, half bridge modules, the one were white and the other were black. And the black were Siemens and the white were Semicron. That was That's really before right. black side, dark side. Uh, that was before <laughs> Infineon was uh, built or taken out of Siemens. So we have a question. What is your take on GAN versus SIC devices in the lower voltage range 600 volt? Do you think advantages in GAN devices technology will result in GAN device taking over SIC on sets on such applications since GAN can switch even faster? The question is that even faster switching is an advantage. And practical applications, <clears throat> EMI is the problem and switching speed still needs to be a little monitored. That's what an old man still remembers. I think the space for both technologies really at that 600, 650 volt node um, GAN is showing some very good uh, performance in the sort of lower power switch mode power supplies like cell phone chargers, laptop chargers, wall cubes, where it can switch fast and it's maximum 600 volts and it's a few amps. I think GAN is a very elegant technology. It's integrated sometimes with the gate driver because it's lateral. So I think that naturally leans itself to that sort of computing consumer type power supply market. But then if you look at higher power, 650, 600, 650 volt, which can go up to, you know, tens and tens of tens of kilowatts on board chargers, for example, solar, for example, then obviously the GAN limitations on opacity start to, to be noticed. And of course, um, you know, you are not switching at megahertz type levels. It's not a quasi resonant flyback at 10 kilohertz. It's the hard switched totem pole, for example, in a PFC. So I think there's a great space for both technologies doing different applications around that voltage node myself. And just one comment to 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 guys. I think from Wingotech we always always put the question: What is the application which will need this high switching uh, device? And so, will uh, what will be the value add for the customer and uh, for this? And for the moment, there are some applications, uh, many in this low power uh, uh, market. Uh, gun. Uh, is already implemented, especially for for mobile chargers. So you already will find in the market gun uh, chargers, or maybe this is also for onboard chargers. This is also something about com. So always we have to ask, okay, what is the application? And for the moment, we do not see here the mainstream of the applications needed this high switching. Because on the other side, you have to think also. Uh, if you can handle, it, especially let's example the passive components, do you have so the passive components available to handle this high switching? Um, and um, yeah, as a as guys say, I think for this 650 volt, yeah, both technologies can be used depending on the application. But the higher for the higher voltage, um, I think here silicon carbide is the the choice for the moment for the next years. And let's see how the gun will develop uh, also for the next years. I also, to add on to that, um, 
So as you mentioned, the, the higher current really, you know, silicon carbide is probably the, the, the better solution. Um, you know, you look at the RDS on over temperature for, you know, for silicon, it's, you know, two, two and a half times. Uh, for, for GAN, I believe it's maybe around two times, maybe guy, you can confirm that. Yeah. Um, the silicon carbide is going to be a lot lower. So when dealing with high voltage, high current, um, really, you know, the silicon carbide will give you maybe like a 700 volt devices that we have in microchip are about 15% increase, 15 to 20% increase at 175C. So uh, really will keep the conduction losses low with a, uh, you know, silicon carbide. Thank you, Ahab. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We had a fruitful discussion and I wish you a nice rest of the day. And so I want to say goodbye and enjoy the evening or the afternoon, wherever you are located at the moment. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.